So anyway, news feeds, live broadcasting, private messaging, stories, those are all features added to the top of social media companies' must-have list right now. And those companies would include Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. So in a world where social media apps are starting to look similar, which ones stand out to investors? Joining us now is Ross Gerber from Gerber Kawasaki and David Banson from Hightower's Bonson Group. Um, all right, so welcome to you both. We're talking, Ross, about who you think are the better plays in the social media space. What would you well, say? Well, there's no question it's the Facebook, Instagram juggernaut that is the, the only real play in social media. In my mind, not only are they profitable, but they're monetizing beautifully and, and pretty much everybody in the world is using it. So um, Facebook's in a great position uh, overall, and, and that's the position we have as a firm. Yeah, you're you're our bull, and you only like them. You don't like anybody else, David. Well, you don't like. You don't, well, let me let me get David's thoughts, yeah, okay. and then we can kick this around. David, you don't like anybody, I guess, because of valuations. Is that the idea? Oh, well, exactly. I like what he said. Facebook's the only one we would consider, and we won't consider it. So essentially, it's a valuation story. I have to pay 25 times Facebook's cash flow to buy it. I certainly agree with him. Facebook's in a different world than Snap and Twitter. We don't consider Snap or Twitter remotely investable. But to the extent that Facebook also falls out of any rational valuation scheme, even though they're incredible operators, it's uninvestable for us. Ross, you think Twitter and Snap are uninvestable? Well, yes and no. So the issue with Twitter and Snap is management, not the products. Both products are great problems products and they have a, a place in social media and there's a ton of activity on both platforms but both managements have no idea how to make money no path to profitability and they'll they would really be better served as part of a bigger social media empire like with Google or some other player so I, I, I love the the platforms but I, I don't love the direction I guess uh, well I, I saw in a note here that you said Snap is a fun toy, but not a business. So I right, know, right. sort of contradicts what you're saying there. No, no, not at all. Like Snap is really fun to use, and kids love using it. Yeah, but, but it's not a business. Well, right. they could if they sold to another company that could leverage the user base. But as a standalone business, it's very hard, I think. All right, David. What and a, Bill, I, yeah, is there anybody you would consider from a, a business stamp, you know, valuations aside, anybody you like in this in this space? Yeah, you said you like Facebook, but what about some of these others here? Like uh, Ross has said that Twitter, he thinks, is the best social media platform with the worst management right now. Well, Twitter is the best social media with the worst management, but even with better management, it doesn't make it monetizable. Um, the comment about Snap is more of a toy than a business. I totally agree with, except for I have three young kids. The toys I buy them don't cost $27 billion. <laughs> so I not only wouldn't buy well, Snap, well, I wouldn't well, buy any company that would pay $27 billion David, for them. But, David, what would be the valuation of a Toys R Us or somebody like that? I mean, to selling toys can be a profitable business. Absolutely. And I agree that it's a very fun platform and has a lot of utility in society. But we're approaching it from an investment standpoint. We take it very seriously for our clients. And I think that the discounting of cash flows says at this price point, it isn't attractive. If Twitter were to get cheap enough, you could say maybe you want to buy it. But then I agree with Ross that the management is dysfunctional. Facebook has real cash flows. They're the most likely company to actually be the Google of this era that it has is. a ridiculous valuation and grows into it. But the problem, it's already grown into it. It's sitting mm -hmm. at 140 bucks at 40 times trailing earnings. Yeah. I look forward and just say it's priced well, for perfection. Let me ask you a bigger question, actually, which is, you know, what, what it, has Facebook just one social media? That was it. That's the end of a 10 year experiment. And the whole space is kind of done and matured now. And Snapchat was the last one or, you know, what yes. I mean, like, have we gotten to that point now in this industry? Yes, I, I think we have. I, I, I think Facebook is Google. And I think this is where David's thesis is wrong. Over the next 10 years, if you really look at how much money Facebook, Instagram um, and and Oculus is going to make, it, it's unquantifiable. To miss this opportunity would be one of the greatest mistakes an investor could make. And, and, and I just, David, you got to think twice about this, this you decision. You Oculus in there, Ross. You know, yeah. they, they got some challenges. Well, VR, well, VR is going to be an amazing platform, and I, and I think it just will take a little time.
David? Uh, and, and I agree with Ross's point that if one is going to be that Google, and if indeed Facebook executes that way, in 10 years, there's a story that will probably make a return to investors. But we cannot do that divorced from risk-reward calculation. And I have a chart I look at every day of my life of Cisco's price in the year 2000. And it's taken 17 years for one of the best companies in the world to get back to 50% of its value that it was back then. Where yeah, but what about Cisco in 1990 to 2000? You know, so well, you well, know, so you're a choosing a time period timeline. that works for you. But you're missing the point here is no, that no, but what about you're video? using a timeline that works no, for no, you. No, no, what about video? That's a 27-year timeline. Listen. Ross? There's no question every young person in the world and even middle-aged people in the world is on Facebook and Instagram. It's hugely monetizable and and, and like not seeing this move to video and what Facebook's going to become in video and all the problems at YouTube and all the ad dollars shifting from Google to Facebook, I think is narrow-minded, David. I, I really think you got to look at this a lot deeper. And we didn't mention Tencent in China, yeah, which is yeah. an incredible company. And one must take a very good look at this company. Um, like we have Chinese and problem. we've been looking very closely at this. Totally, totally agree, Ross. I'd buy Tencent every day over, over Facebook. And to the extent that the thesis this would be dependent on them coming in and dominating Google ad revenue on a risk reward basis. You have to agree that's a very speculative play. Listen, right. our, I, I think it's not at all. I think you, you really need to talk to some more kids. Finally, we get you guys to disagree. It took this long. There you go. <laughs> all yes. right. Thank you, Ross, David. Good to see you both. Appreciate it. Good to be here.